Hey up! Welcome to my talk about how to automate MariaDB Galera cluster deployments and configuration management using Ansible. A couple of words about me. Uh, my name is Federico Razzoli. I'm the founder of Vetabase. Uh, I'm also a database consultant for Vetabase and uh, I basically use MariaDB since before it became stable and uh, MySQL since forever. Um, Vetabase is proud to be a MariaDB Foundation technology partner that contributes content to the MariaDB knowledge base uh, in particular, we um, contribute contents for a section about automation of MariaDB. That is the reason why I mentioned this. So you can find a section about um, how to use Ansible to automate MariaDB. Uh, if you don't know MariaDB knowledge base, I really, really, really suggest you take a look at it because it's excellent. And also it's a wiki, so anyone, including you, can contribute contents, fix mistakes made by others, uh, and so on. Um, before starting, I want to tell you that this talk is based on a working complete example that you can find on GitHub at this URL that you can see. Um, Again, it is a working example and it installs everything you need in real life, you know, in, in your cluster. Um, it is based on database opinions and in particular my opinions, which are not universal truths. So feel free to express objections or different opinions and I will be very, very curious to read them. Uh, in this talk, there is, there, there is not enough time to um, describe the whole example. Um, so we will only see the general ideas behind it and we will see at some interest, hopefully interesting details. So let's start. And the first thing we want to look at is inventories. Inventories are the files that say which servers we are going to um, manage using Ansible. Uh, you can also use, you know, um, dynamic inventories in Ansible, but we will not look into this. So we will have only two inventories called production and staging, and this is what they look like. They are almost the same. Uh, they define basically two groups, one for PMM, which is the solution for monitoring that we're using, and uh, a group for uh, um, the MariaDB nodes, which are part of the same cluster, a three node Galera cluster. Um, in each group, you can see we define the nodes. Uh, it's interesting that even if the group contains only one node, we still want to define a group for that, okay? And we want to follow a consistent naming convention. So even the group PMM, which has one node, uh, well, the node is called PMM1, because if one day we decide to have a second PMM server, it will be called PMM2 and we will not break any um, naming convention. It's not very common, honestly, to um, place variables in the inventories, but we are doing it here because these particular variables are PMM, hostname, and uh, port. So they are actually related to an inventory. And if for some reason uh, we change the node that we are going to use for PMM, well, we will only need to change the inventory and nothing else. Um, the, dif the only difference between production and staging inventories is the actual IPs of the machines, okay? So in every other respect, they are the same. And this is very important because it means that with the same command, 
almost the same command. We can deploy to staging and then to production. What we need to change is only the name of the inventory. And, you know, this leads to have a much better test um, set of commands we want to use. Um, the next step is, of course, at least one play. Um, well, if you're not very familiar with Ansible, you can see that all it does is associate um, the hosts to the roles. Okay. Uh, you probably see something uncommon already, but we're going to talk about it. So the next thing we are going to talk about is the roles. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to drink coffee, but I need it, sorry. <laughs> so, um, the most important role is actually a meta role called MariaDB Galera Complete. And it actually includes a list of other uh, roles. You can see the list of the, in, in, the, in the slide, or you can take a look at <clears throat> the meta directory, the main.yml file, and uh, basically this is the file that defines meta information about the role and uh, include the list of uh, dependencies of the role. Okay, so th this is important because in the play we only associate um, hosts to this meta role and not to the list of um, not to the list of uh, base roles, let's call them this way. Um, so if the list of base role changes and we have many hosts of many groups associated to this meta role, well, um, this is basically um, less error prone. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, let's see what these base roles are. The first is um, Linux for MariaDB. Basically, it configures Linux optimally for running MariaDB. Uh, then we have Crony, which basically installs um, an NTP client, uh, which is useful because we are running a cluster and we have monitoring. And if we have uh, a clock drift, uh, so basically the clock time in the, um, in the nodes does not match, well, this will be a problem. This could break both the cluster and monitoring, uh, especially the monitoring, actually. Um, then we have the main role, which is MariaDB Galera. Then we have MariaDB permissions, which um, creates or maybe drops uh, the needed permissions, uh, users and permissions in the database. And uh, this is not necessarily bound to MariaDB Galera. This could be used, for example, for standalone MariaDB servers, or maybe MySQL Percona server, and so on. Then we have MyDumper for backups. Um, which is actually probably the best um, logical backups tool. Um, then we have, uh, oh, and it's important to put it in a separate role actually, because we could install MyDumper on a host that doesn't run any database. And yes, it makes, mm, it, it makes sense. Then we have PMM client for monitoring. Again, it's important to have a separate role because uh, PMM can monitor other database types, not necessarily MariaDB. And then we have cron jobs. This may sound a bit weird to you. And if you're curious about why I put cron jobs in a separate role, well, I will explain this probably at the end of the talk. So let's see some highlights. So the most interesting details in, in my opinion. Okay, so in this slide, you can see uh, a small snippet, well, a, a single task from Linux from MariaDB. Uh, if you're not familiar with Ansible task syntax, the key here is with nested key. 
basically, we are looping over two arrays, um, the list of allowed ports and the list of uh, IP tables chains. And for each combination of port and chain, basically, we are opening it. Uh, so basically, we are making sure that um, the node is reachable uh, from the outside. And here you can see the actual array. Um, um, the array is um, well, an array of objects. Um, Basically, you can see every port and uh, the corresponding protocol, TCP or UDP. Um, the first is normal MariaDB port, and the other ports are the one needed by Galera. And uh, you can also see another array, which is kernel parameters. I didn't show the corresponding tasks uh, for brevity, but you can see it in the repository. And basically, uh, well, you can guess what it does. It tunes some um, kernel parameters. And uh, the only thing we are tuning here is swappiness. We are setting it to zero. Um, some would say this is questionable because basically many people set swappiness to one, which means that Linux will allow, uh, allow swapping only when the alternative is uh, that a process crashes. And this is okay on a standalone server for sure. But we are talking about a cluster and honestly, um, if we have proper automatic restart, uh, I'm not too afraid of a single node crashes. I'm more worried about um, uh, a node becoming too slow, probably because it exhausted the RAM memory. And uh, if it happens, it can slow down the whole cluster. So personally, I would prefer the node to crash. But again, this is just an opinion, and you can set uh, swappiness to one. I'm just showing you how to do it. And I'm just showing that you should actually do it. Um, then we have two snippets from the MariaDB Galera um, role. The first snippet is in may.yml. <coughs> Sorry. Um, it basically includes another file, which is validate YML. Um, the file is a bit longer than you can see here, but you can see one example task. And basically, uh, you can understand that it validates uh, variables. I think this is quite important. Why? Because in a complex environment, uh, even this example, you have a lot of variables. Uh, if you change something at some point, uh, maybe not just in the variables, maybe you know, you maybe you make some in-depth changes. Um, you you want to check that everything is still correct, uh, because if it isn't, well, hopefully when you try to apply your roles, Ansible will fail. But it could be a bit hard to debug and understand why it failed. Especially if you have um, you know, variables that are used in multiple roles. For example, you could have some variables with some pets, and these pets um, are needed by MariaDB Galera uh, role, but also by I don't know, a backup role, for example. So it's better that every um, role checks that the variable it needs are correct. Okay. If not, well, you can see this is an assertion. Um, if the condition is false, uh, it will fail and print um, a, an error message that you specify. Then, this is also interesting. This is another task which includes another file, which is clear.yml. Basically, what we're doing here is including a file that 
uh, delete and recreate the data directory. Uh, this is something that actually you want to do sometimes. For example, if your server has corrupted data, you want to um, reinitialize it uh, from scratch. But the problem is um, Ansible is supposed to be idempotent, and this means that you should be free to reapply the same role again and again, even if your server is already running in production, and you shouldn't do any damage. So the key here is the when key. Uh, basically, we are including this file clean.yml only if we defined a db init variable. Okay, we can define it um, in the configuration files, or we can pass it as an environment environment variable. Um, it doesn't really make any difference. Then this slide shows how we specify the information about our nodes. Okay, so we have a cluster name variable, which is, well, not much important, but then we have cluster hosts. And then this is an array and each element represents a single node. And uh, each element is also an array, uh, sorry, um, an object, um, an object with these property properties, not name, public IP, and private IP. And then you may wonder why we also have a separate array called private IPs. Well, actually, this is not clear. Uh, I don't like it. But uh, there are limitations in how we can loop over arrays and uh, arrays of objects and access certain properties. So basically, um, it was not possible or at least too difficult to do something and I preferred to create a separate uh, array for private APs. Uh, again, even if it's not clean um, in this particular case, it's probably not the end of the world. You just need to update it when needed. Um, the next slide shows Another interesting task, because if you look again at the when key, this key checks if this is the first node of, um, of a cluster. So the node defined as a first element in the array. Okay. And also if the uh, if, if the cluster uh, consists of more than one nodes, okay? Because in this case, we want to perform some special operations. Well, in this particular case, what we're doing is copying to the server a particular file, which basically um, sets um, WSREP cluster address um, to only the address of this current node, okay? And this is useful to bootstrap. Um, you probably know that this is not the easiest way to bootstrap because we could simply use the WSREP new cluster option. Um, but the thing is, well, we are automating things here. So I prefer to use a method that works even on older um, MariaDB versions and also on MySQL version, uh, well, MySQL with Galera or uh, Percona server uh, with Galera. Um, also, in any case, even if you don't like it, well, this particular check can be different, can, can be useful in different situations too. Uh, for example, when we want to restore a backup, because if we want to do it, we want to restore it only on the first node, not on all the nodes. Otherwise, we will try to restore three copies of the backup, which doesn't make sense, right? So this other slide shows um, what MariaDB permission does. 
basically um right this is just a high level description description and uh, uh, well the permissions themselves uh, and the users themselves are defined using sql statements in two files the first file as you can see um, represents <coughs> a groups of permissions, a logical group of permissions. And the second file is um, the permissions for this particular node. Okay. Um, you will not use it for a cluster, but anyway, uh, the idea is the first file is more generic and the second file kind of overrides the first. Okay. Um, so we prefer to use SQL statements for a series of reasons. If your car uses, uh, well, just ask anyway. I will just say that it's probably simpler and more flexible. Um, this is the last slide, and uh, it's about the strange role, which is cron jobs. So. Again, you would probably expect that if a cron job is related to backups, for example, it is defined in a backup role. But the thing is, you want to kind of coordinate your cron jobs. Okay, so, um, what does it mean? Well, if you have several cron jobs and maybe some of them are heavyweight, you don't want them to run at the same time. You want to make sure that they run at different times and they should be times when the server is not overloaded. So you, you may prefer, I prefer, and you may prefer to have um, an array of jobs defined in only one central place. And this is the purpose of this simple role. So again, this was the last slide. Um, we finished. So thank you very much for attending. And I'm very curious to read your questions. Bye. So hi, Federico. Uh, thank you for your talk. It was very interesting. And I have some experience with Ansible. So for me, uh, I learned some stuff in it. So very nice. And um, I had some questions. Um, so what do you suggest? I is it very important to, auto to automate uh, MariaDB configuration? Why is, is it just a, a fashion thing or is it a hype thing? Do you do What's your opinion on that? Hi, Faustin. Yeah, it's a great question. And uh, yes, I think it is really important, not necessarily from the beginning, because maybe you're starting a new company, maybe you have only one server and you don't really need to automate it. But this is a need that you will have very soon, right? As the workload grows and you will have repetitive tasks and you will add new servers. If you do this, manually, uh, you will hang yourself because at some point uh, you will realize that you are spending more and more time uh, doing manual tasks that could be automated. And um, you will make mistakes and these mistakes will consume even more time and will probably waste money uh, for the company. Okay, and 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 what about um, as I think uh, most of the companies they, they don't start by automate, automating automatizations uh, with Ansible or all other uh, um, uh, configuration management uh, system. What do you suggest? Is it is it is it too late or is it always a good uh, thing to do to 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 start uh, automatization even after you have already deployed your stuff? Uh, well, of course, as things progress and you have more servers and so on, it may look more difficult to start to automate things. But actually, you could start from simple tasks. So, for example, you run backups manually once a day. Well, you can write a bash script 
and you run also other tasks um, that are repetitive, well, you can automate them by writing uh, more bash scripts. And then at some point, you will realize that it would be easier to have Ansible or Puppet or anything else uh, rather than a set of bash scripts. And then, well, it will be easier, right? You will just have to kind of translate the logic from um, Bash to, for example, Ansible. So if you do it gradually, it's not really a huge effort. Okay, so this offers me a very good transition because you speak, you spoke about Bash, and um, I see that in your in your project uh, in the GitHub uh, repo that you have created, you are using Bash and you are using uh, SQL for 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 applying some tasks and in your playbooks. And my question is, why why don't you use the the MySQL user module uh, or the, the the other modules that comes with the with Ansible and that uh, are um, maintained by the community? Uh, okay. Mm. I don't think my opinion here should necessarily be universal, but the thing is, I use uh, the shell module because it's very simple and it's universal. For me, when I use anything else, the main reason is because the shell module is not even potent. Okay, uh, a command will be executed every time. I call uh, that Ansible playbook. Um, so for example, I could use, um, I don't know, uh, IP table module, for example, to create a rule if it doesn't exist yet. Okay, that's a good reason. But in the case of MySQL modules, uh, well, I could use MySQL query to run a query, but again, that query will be executed always, every time I run the, um, um, the the, um, the role, so I don't see a real advantage here. Okay, so th this is interesting because I, I had the problem with the MySQL replication module because it didn't it didn't support uh, GTID positions uh, positionings uh, at the time I used it. So um, I had to use a, a specific SQL command and I couldn't use it. So I don't know if we have lots of time, but don't you think, um, wh what's your opinion that should MariaDB Foundation um, uh, help the community, help Ansible community to create specific modules for MariaDB? Uh, what's your opinion on that? Oh, if you can, yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, because actually that's a very good point, um, the modules are created by people who, basically have some work to do, probably, right? Uh, if they don't need a certain feature, they will probably never implement it in the module. But if you use SQL directly, you will have many, many more features. Um, that's another good reason to uh, use SQL directly, in, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, unless MariaDB Foundation uh, starts developing a specific module. Okay, very interesting. Okay, I think we are uh, uh, finishing our time. So thank you very much for everything. And thank you. Bye-bye.